When last we left off with this problem, we were trying to take this complex number, 2 squared 2 minus 2i squared 2 to the 6th power. We didn't want to do it by hand, so we were turning it into polar form. Over here to the right, we had just calculated that the angle was 315 degrees and that the radius r was going to turn out to be a nice number 4. This is typically, if students have trouble with this problem, this is where they stall. Because they're like, oh, I just did all this. Now, why was I turning it to polar form? Well, the whole idea was so you could take it to the sixth power. So we are looking here to take our number now in polar form, 4 cosine 315 plus I sine 315. And the whole idea was we were going to take it to the sixth power. So you have to remember Dame of Y's theorem directly above us that, oh, when I want to take it to the 6th power, I take the r to the 6th power, I do 4 to the 6th, which is 4,096, and then I multiply the angle times 6. So 315 times 6 was 1,890 degrees. I'll explain why it was crossed out in a second. 1,890 degrees is a huge angle. The downside of doing this is that we now have to turn our answer back into rectangular form. So I have to figure out what the cosine of 1,890 degrees is. Well, I have no idea. I need to know where it's at, which quadrant it's in. I need to know what its reference angle is. So if you start taking 360s out of there, turns out you can take 360 out five times, which is 1,800, which, and it leaves you then with 90 degrees left. So 1,890 is actually the same thing as 90 degrees. Now, no, don't assume that that means you can take the last two digits on every number, and that's what you should use. This one just turned out that way. So in reality, then, we just need to know what's the cosine of 90 degrees and the sine of 90 degrees. Well, two easy special angle values. Cosine of 90 is 0. Sine of 90 is 1. So I have 0 plus 1i with a 4,096 out front. If we distribute the 4,096, you'll find that you don't really need to write the 0, so you just end up with 4,096i. And you have taken that number to the 6th power. Kind of cool. While that wasn't necessarily speedy, it was probably still easier than foiling six of those and have to simplify everything. Okay, our other pro type of problem we want to solve today is we want to find some roots. So I actually posed to them, let's solve the equation x cubed plus 8 equals 0. And you're all going, but I can solve that by hand. We've been doing that since algebra 2. And you're right, you have. But you've been only finding the real number answers, not also the possible complex number answers. So if you solved it by normal algebra, most of you would subtract 8 over and cube root both sides, which would produce an answer of negative 2. But there is another way you could get rid of the cube on the x. Instead of cube rooting it, you could do, as I've done in this second example to the right, you could take it to the one-third power on both sides. Well, why would we want to take it, think of it as taking it to a power? Well, in our case, it's so we can apply Dame of Waugh's theorem. We can actually take it to a power. That's an easy thing for us. So we're going to come up with all the c answers here. If it's x cubed, there are three answers. If it was x to the fifth, there are five answers. Some are real numbers. Some are totally imaginary. So here we go. Before I can do anything, I have to change it to polar form. So you'll notice I have changed the negative 8 here to a negative 8 plus 0i. I have to have it look like a complex number to the 1 3rd power. So that is actually the point I'm trying to figure out r and theta. So over here to the right, you'll see I created a graph. Left 8, up 0. So since it's on a quadrant line, there's absolutely no work. We just got to use our brains. Since it's on the 180 line, my angle must be 180 degrees. And my radius, the distance from this origin to that point, would be 8. Now, please don't do negative 8, because 
negative 8, 180 degrees would mean that you should go back to the right side. You should go to the opposite side. So it's not a negative. The radius, radius is always going to be a positive number in this type of instance. Once again, we go fine. We know r, we know theta. Somebody gets it written down in polar form, and then we saw again. So I've got this number in polar form, 8 cosine of 180 plus I sine of 180. What do I want to do with it? Well, go back to your original problem. We're trying to take it to the one third power. And since I know Dave Mavois theorem, taking it to the one third power sounds pretty easy. So I could take and have 8 to the one third power, and then I could have I could take one third times 180, so that would be 60 degrees, and that would give me the first answer in polar form. Now, some of these I'll ask you to polar, some of them I'll ask you to leave rectangular, but we're going to turn this one back to rectangular because it's fairly easy to do, and so. You would go, okay, well, 8 to the 1 third power is 2 root 8, so I have 2. I'm over here down in the middle. And then I got cosine of 60 plus I sine of 60. Well, hey, that's the special angle values. Cosine of 60 is a half. Sine of 60 squared root of 2. They're both in positive quadrant. So we just need to distribute the 2 through there. You'll notice when I distribute this 2 out front in there, it's going to make the fractions cancel. And so I end up with just a nice, sweet little 1 plus i times the square root of 3. Now, here's the downside. That's not the whole answer. This thing is supposed to have three answers. That's one possible answer. Where are the other two? Well, now look excited here. You get to go back and do it again. Because while we said our angle was 180 degrees, if I'm sitting here, over here, on the far right edge, and I, I'm trying to get a different color here, so I'm over on the far right edge, if I'm sitting here at 180 degrees, are there any other angles within that same spot? And yes, there are. You can take and switch it over. Add 360 on. That would be the same angle. So back here, I'm on the left now. 180 plus 360 would be 540. So you add 360 on, and you do it again. You take 8 to the 1 third, which gets me the 2 on here, over here. I take 1 third times 540 degrees, which gets me 180. So now here on the right-hand side, I've got 2 cosine 180 plus I sine 180. If you fill in the values for cosine and sine of 180, which are negative 1 and 0, you'll discover that when you distribute the 2, hey, wow, I just got negative 2. There's the answer we need from algebra. So we know we need three answers since it's x cubed. You're going to do this one more time. You're going to add on 360, which in this case is going to give you 900. And then you're going to take it to the 1 third power. 8 to the 1 third power is 2, and 1 third times 900 is 300. So in reality, I have 2 times the cosine of 300 degrees plus I sine of 300 degrees. Well, i got to get it back in rectangular form, so I have to figure out each of those special angle values. 300 degrees, if you look here to the very, very far right, 300 degrees would be in the fourth quadrant with a 60 degree reference angle. So I'm really going to be thinking 60 here. Cosine of 60 is 1 half. And because we're in the fourth quadrant, it's still positive. Side of 60 is going to be square root 3 over 2. The sine in the fourth quadrant is going to be negative and, of course, multiplied by i. So when I put those back together and distribute my 2, it's out to the far right. I'll get my 2's will cancel, so I will be left with 1 
minus i times the square root of 3. And there's my third answer. Now in class today, they said that, whoa, 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 wait, wait a minute. You can just, you can keep adding 360 forever. Wouldn't you keep getting different answers? And no, you don't. Once you've found the three you need, if you keep going, if you add another 360, take it times a third, all that good stuff, you'll just start to get these same answers repeatedly again. It'll cycle through these same answers over and over and over as long as you want to sit there and work it. Now, once again, yeah, that's kind of a lot of work, but if you get good with your special angle values, it's not that big a deal. Okay. I wanted to write a list of steps for how to do this kind of a problem, but I do want to point out there's one slight shortcut. I want you to take a look over here on the right side. I had cosine of 60. <laughs> then the next one was, was cosine of 180. And the third one was cosine of 300. If you notice, those three numbers are evenly spaced. 60 to 180 is 120 degrees. 180 to, uh, plus 120 is 300 degrees. So what's up? Why is this working? Well, if we were doing one-third powers, one-third of what is 120 degrees? Well, hopefully you're saying 360. So yeah, if you want to shortcut at least a minor little step, once you've found this first answer, once you've found cosine 60 plus I sine 60, you can simply go, oh, if I take 360 degrees and I multiply it by the fraction I'm doing, which in this case is one third, I'll get 120 degrees. And that means that those will be separated by 120 degrees when we write our answers here. You have you would have started with cosine of 60. If you add 120, you're at cosine of 180. Add 120, you're at 300. If you were doing fourth roots and had one fourth powers up there, how much would you be adding? Well, hopefully you're going, well, 360 times the one fourth is really 90 degrees. So if I did that, then they would be equally spread 90 degrees apart. And you would just have to convert them. It's not that difficult, but it does take a little bit of practice. So I have on this last board here a set of steps for how to do these kind of problems. This is how you find roots of things. Cube roots, fourth roots, tenth roots, whatever. You're finding roots. So uh, what we did here, I was kind of writing a set of steps. We did x cubed plus 8 equals 0. So the first thing you had to do was solve for x. So if you solve for x, you would have x cubed equals negative 8. So that's step one. We have isolated x. Step two, I want to get rid of the cube. I don't really want to do a cube root. Instead, because these are many of your... Yes, you can't see that. Let's try that again. You need to get rid of that x cubed, so we're simply going to take it to the one-third power on both sides. So step two is saying get rid of the power by using a 1 over n power. And then the biggie. You have to change it into polar form. It has to be in the form r cosine i sine before you can work any of the rest of the problem. Excuse me a second. So assume we're now in polar form. You're now to the point that you have 8 cosine of 180 degrees plus I sine of 180 degrees. Your goal is to take this to the one-third power. So that's what step four is saying. Apply Daimler's Law's theorem. Take it to the one-third power. Get your first answer. The key thing to remember there is you're only getting one answer. You don't get all your answers until you do this repeatedly. In this particular problem then, step five is telling you how do you figure out how far apart your answers should be spread. And so if you take one-third times 360 degrees, since one-third is what fraction we're trying to find, you'll get 120 degrees. If you have it 
Your first answer figured out, all you have to do then is add 120 degrees to each successive answer until you get all three. Don't worry about going too far or doing too many, because as soon as you start to go too far, your answers will start to repeat. You'll see the same ones over and over and over. So once it's repeating, you're done. Now, this probably will take a few more steps. If you're really hung up with this, please come see me. Hope to see you later this week or early next week.